Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to Friday afternoon prayer. Uh, this is Brother West coming to you again, and we're going to pray again. We've been praying all week, and uh, we're praying to pull down strongholds. We're praying to pull down things that are in the way of the people of God receiving their promise. I'm going to say this before I pray. God says that someone that's listening to me and that will listen to me, God says that it's finished. God says that it's complete. Let it go. Don't worry about it. God has fixed it. God has opened up a door. There's some of you that you've been waiting on a door to come open. God has opened that door. The door is open. And God said, try again. And this time, this door is going to come open. And today, let's pray for the perverted tongue. And also, I want to pray for uh, the sick in the hospital. And I want to pray for those that don't know God. Join me in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We bless you and we magnify you. Again, this is the day that you've made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. God, today... I want to speak and pray against the tongue, against the mouth. The Bible says that there's life and there's death in the power of the tongue. And, uh, uh, and, and, he, and him that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Whatever that fruit is, whether it's life or death. And that's the place that we want to speak about. It's the tongue. The tongue in itself, the perverted tongue, gossip. There are many people, even in the, the household of faith, who gossip, not realizing and understanding that gossip is a sin. Gossip is a, a work of the flesh. Many times they become frustrated because uh, things are not going their way or, or people don't understand them. And so out of that frustration, God, they outburst or they say things that they shouldn't say. And then when they send them out and when they speak them out, they can't take them back. And God, I want to speak to that mouth. I want to speak to many people, their mouths, because many people, uh, they want to be blessed. They want you to bless them, but their mouth is holding them back. Their mouth is causing them to become cursed because they're putting their mouth on other people. Oftentimes, people, we talk about murder, people who kill people, people who assassinate people uh, physically so. But there are many people who talk a lot don't realize and understand that it's the, their mouth that can assassinate people. It's their mouth that can destroy people's lives. It's their mouth that can slander people. As a matter of fact, God, you said in your word that, that that's one of the things that you hate. That's an abomination. You said that, that feet that are swift to sow mischief and also to bring discord. Those things that you hate. And it starts from that mouth. It starts from that conversation. Because we understand that it was through the mouth and it was through a conversation that introduced sin to come in through, through the woman, through Adam. So, God, we want to arrest that mouth. And in that mouth, we want to uh, control that mouth with temperance. Temperance is self-control. For those, for those that don't have self-control with their mouth, they're, they're temperamental. They fly off the handle at everything. And God, we understand and realize that it started and, and, it, and it stemmed from a hurt, a rejection, something that you hadn't dealt with, something you hadn't uh, uh, healed them from yet. It's almost it's, it, what I see, God, I see like a, it's like almost like a, a it's almost like a splinter. It's like a sting, a splinter uh, that's on the inside of their spirit, man, on the inside of their flesh. And that stinger keeps pressing and it keeps irritating them. And they're frustrated because they're uncomfortable. They're frustrated because it hurts. And so they want to get it out. They want to find relief. They're uncomfortable within. They're unhappy within. They are sad within. There's a, they, they, they have low self-esteem within. Uh, their, world, their world is crumbling down within. And so oftentimes what they do, what they do, God, to try to, try to protect their heart, to try to protect what's in, they'll lash out. To try to protect what's in and not to let people know what they're dealing with. To not to let people know what they're facing and what they're fighting through. They, they, they are put on a facade. Oftentimes they're smiling. They're smiling with their face. Oftentimes they're smiling with their face. Their face, but they're unhappy. They're unhappy, God. We want to go to that root. 
We want to go to that, that, that place, that sting, and we want to pull that sting out. You can do it, God. We want to control that mouth that they can be blessed. We want, don't want them to walk in, clerk, in, in a curse, God. God, for many of they're walking in place. They're walking in place because they keep talking about the same old thing. That's a circle. They're going around a circle. The same conversation is the same old thing. It's a cycle. They're ensnared. They're ensnared with their own words. They're bound. They're trapped with their own words, God. And God, we want to get them out of that. God, we want to deliver them. We want to free them, God. God, free them from their own mouth, God. God, free them from their own mind. God, free them from their own spirit, God. Free them from their own frustration, God. They are frustrated, God. They're frustrated. They won't change, God. They won't change, but they keep talking about the problem. They won't change, but they keep talking about the condition. They won't change. They keep picking on the uh, situation instead of going to you and letting you deal with it. God, give them, God, give them, God, give them, God, give them the wisdom. God, give them, open their eyes up, God, that they recognize and that they realize that they need you. That they realize and recognize that they need to stop what they're doing. They need to turn away from what they're doing. True repentance is a lifestyle. It's not just with words, but it's with an action. It's with a, a movement. It's with their whole lifestyle changing, turning away from that, God. And God, there are people who are, who are, who are listening to me, who, who, are, who been listening to me and who will listen to me. They want to, they want to heal. They want to go away. They want to uh, feel better. They want to be delivered. They want to be set free from that condition that they're in. But they find themselves still in that situation. They find themselves still uh, in that hole. It's like a dark hole that they're in and they can't get out. They, it, they can't get out. And, and the more they think, the darker they they go into that hole, but then see in that hole, they keep complaining in that hole. They keep reaching out even so that they, they almost like that. They like the man that was at the pool of Bethesda and where every season that the angel would come by this one particular pool and everyone that was sick that would got in the pool, they would be made whole. But this one particular man, uh, he waited for 38 years for someone to pick him up. He waited for 38 years for someone to feel sorry for him. He waited for 38 years for someone to pick him up and put him in the pool and to be here and even when Jesus you came to him and you, and you told him uh, will you do you want to be made whole and he was trying to give you the excuses on why he, he wouldn't be made whole why he wouldn't set free God there's many that are listening to me right now they're giving you all kind of excuses on why God I would serve you if I had this God I would serve you and I would do this if I had that those are all excuses but Jesus ignored his excuses and Jesus said do you want to be made whole rise up and walk and for those people that have a temperamental problem. They have an anger issue. They have anger issues. They have trust issues. And they're going around that circle. They keep saying the same thing over and over. They wait for people to feel sorry for them. They wait for people to pat them on the back and say, it's okay, baby. But you're not going to do that. But you're speaking to them day to day. Those people uh, that have a melancholy spirit. Those people that are waiting for people to pick them up. For those people that are waiting uh, for something to happen. They're waiting for the pie in the sky to fall upon them. God, God speak to their heart right now. Now, and command, we speak to them right now, will you be made whole? And if you want to be made whole, rise up and walk. In other words, drop your complaining, drop your excuses and go to Jesus. Uh, drop uh, drop complaining about, well, I would do this if, if he wouldn't have done this. And if this pastor wouldn't have done this. If this woman wouldn't have done that, I would have done this, God. But God, you're not looking for excuses, but you're looking, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be changed? Do you want to be delivered, God? God, deliver them right now, God, challenge them. God, touch their heart, God, and take that, that stony heart out, that heart that don't want to try again, that heart that don't want to love again, that heart that don't want to uh, forgive again. God, take that heart out and teach them how to forgive, God. And God, also, also, God, we pray for those that are in, in the hospital. We, we pray for the bereaved. We pray for the bereaved. We pray for uh, the, the mothers that are bereaved. We pray for the fathers that are bereaved. We pray for the young ladies, the young girls, the babies that are bereaved. And God, we go into the hospital right now and God, touch their heart. God, touch their heart, God. God, raise them up out of the hospital, God. God, whatever the condition is, God, God, we speak against it. And God, we speak healing right now. Because healing is the children's bread. God, as they're crying out in, the, in their mind, are they crying out on their backside? Some, God, they're so sick that they can't even speak no more. This sickness done even done took their words away from them. This sickness done took their, their conversation away from them where they can't even talk. They can just look and think, God. Even as they're thinking and they can hear God. God, we speak a seed into their into the spirit right now. And we speak, God, for those that can't speak, that they open up their mouth right now and speak again.
God, we speak, God, for those people that have uh, diabetes in the hospital. God, we speak against that machine right now and we speak healing. Cause everything to recorrect. Cause everything to reform. Cause everything in their body to be reshaped in Jesus' name. For that, that woman, that woman, that mother, that boy that have swelling in their feet. God, we ask that you take the swelling away. Take the water away. Take it away. That person that's fighting, that's fighting high blood pressure. God, we speak to him right now. We speak to that pressure right now and cause that pressure to go down. Cause it to go down in the name of Jesus. And that person, God, and that person, that person that, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that are laying at the edge of life where they're in a valley of decision. You've been calling them. You've been telling them to come. They've been hearing you, but they've been ignoring you. They've been listening, but they've been ignoring you. They keep doing what they want to do. They keep thinking what they want to think. And they keep saying what they want to think, say. God, arrest them right now, God. God, because you're, you're, you're making things difficult for them. God, you're pulling things around them away that they might see, God. You're pulling things around their comfort zones away that they might come to you. God, you're stripping them, God. God, even some you're broke, you, you cause them to become broke. What they thought was a love affair, what they thought that, that was the love of their life, you cause it to break. You cause that relationship to break. You cause that relationship to tear away. And they think, they think, they, they think it's the end of the world. They think it was the adversary, but it was you that was sending it. Because the relationship that we was in, it wasn't, it, you didn't send it. The relationship that they were in, you see down the end of the road of peace, it's going to end in disaster. And for that reason, you sent grace. And you sent your mercy. And you caused it to end. And God, they don't understand God. But God, give them understanding. At that place where they are broken. At that place where they feel rejected. At that place that they feel like they're in despair. God, let them know that you did this thing. And the reason that you did this thing, that they might come to you. Now you're talking to them right now, God. You said you, you stand at the door and you knock. And you said, open up the door and let me come in. And I give you life and life more abundantly. You said it, God. You said, whosoever shall call on my name, they shall be saved. You said, God. With these same lips, you said the mouth, with the mouth, a man believes unto salvation. But now you said with the heart, it believe, you believe, they believe unto, uh, unto, unto salvation, unto, unto salvation, unto righteousness, God. And you said in your word, whosoever shall call on your name, they shall be saved. And God, all they got to do, God, all they got to do is confess in their heart and believe, uh, believe, uh, believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that you're Lord and you're raised from the dead. And they shall be saved. To realize and understand that you died for them. To understand that you, uh, you, you died and you were dead for th three days, and, but you rose on that third day. And the reason of you rising is for them, that they can come to you boldly, to your throne. That they can obtain mercy and find help in a time of need. And God, they're in a time of need. They are. Because they done went to everything. They done went to the bottom. They couldn't find relief in that. And they, they, went, to, they went to various situations. They went to friendship. They, they couldn't find in that. They went to drugs. They couldn't find happiness in that, that longing, that, that emptiness was still there. They even tried it in a relationship. They thought that if they get, get with this guy, they thought they would get this girl, that, that it would be better, that they would feel better, that that would be the answer. But they realized and they discovered after the relationship, after the, all the love and whatever it was, they realized that there was a void there. And that void is you, God. God, make that void become louder. God, make that void become stronger. Because you said that they that hunger and thirst after your righteousness, they shall be filled, God. You said, open up your mouth and you'll fill it, God. Fill their mouth. When they, as they open up, fill them. Fill them and change them, God. Fill them with the indwelling of your Holy Ghost, God. Change their mind, God. Change their life, God. Redirect them, God. Turn their life around. And as you're turning their life around, God, turn their walk around. Turn their conversation around. Turn their thoughts around. That they might be saved, healed, and delivered. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. And heaven smile on you. And may all God's best be yours. Have a good day.